Hey guys, N8N is this cool workflow automation tool. And in the last video, I showed you how to install it locally and you can run it totally for free. And in this video, I'm going to demonstrate a use case for creating a workflow and actually have it do something helpful. So I'll first show the end result. So this is a web scraper for a public listing site for apartments. And it's this Oigotia site here, and here there is a public listing of an apartment, and it has the price and the square footage and a lot of information in here. So if you want to take this and place it somewhere else, we can use a workflow in N8N. So in this workflow, it grabs that information and creates a re new row in this Google Sheets doc and grabs all the information from that website into different cells, which I wanted to have. So now we have four rows in this Google Sheets and let's show when we run the workflow, what happens. So let's just press execute workflow and we see the steps running and it's almost done. Now it's, is it, it's executed successfully. And now we have a new row in here. So it's row number five and it has all the information. So let's dive a bit deeper on what those steps are and how do they work. So the first step is just the, when you click on execute workflow, it regulars the workflow. But the actual first step here is the HTTP request, which actually does something. So this is a standard component components you can add from here from the plus icon that you can just search for HTTP request and add it in here. And this is uh, a get method and the URL is just pointing to that website we were looking at before. And from the response, we have said response format is text and put output field, output and field data. So it creates this JSON object, which has all of that HTML, which is quite unhandy to read as is. So that's why we are processing it further in the next step. And once you're, when you're building this, you can also just try what happens. You can just click on execute step and it's running the query again and producing the output and you could change the URL here. Of course, later on, you would want the URL to be dynamic, but uh, I'm not quite there yet. I'm still, uh, in the process of building this workflow. So the next step is to grab uh, fields from that JSON object. And for that, we are using this uh, code module. And in this, we are using JavaScript and it's using a library or module called Cheerio. And it's uh, quite short bit of uh, JavaScript, which I actually was just uh, asking ChatGP to, gen to generate all of this code for me. I just pointed to the fields, which I want to have, and it created this helper function, which uses uh, Cheerio to, to grab the, the field. And uh, then I'm just calling that function uh, repetitively with the different uh, titles in the in the website. Like here we have this title and then we have a value. So, and again, for creating this, I actually just gave uh, a copy paste of the information in the website and said, I want to have these fields. And it generated me all, the, all of the code and just plugged it in here. And I then ran execute step and it's building me that JSON. At first I did get an error response and the output didn't didn't work immediately. It was saying it's not able to load this Jirio uh, library, but I used ChatGPT to resolve it and I'll just in a moment show you a few tips on how to use those external modules. So now we have this output in a JSON object and then we can um, use the next step to process it further and, and place it somewhere. And I, I just use this append row in sheet, uh, this uh, 
this step here to place it in the Google Sheets doc. And uh, yeah, for, for each of these steps, you do have documentation which you can use, or then you could just ask ChatGPT to, to help you or use a combination of those two. But well, I did need to create a credentials for um, a service account and, and do some, some steps in, in the Google uh, account first to, to get this to work. But then it was just a matter of saying resource sheet within document, append row, and this is the name of the document and then the name of the sheet. And, and then I used map automatically. And yeah, just when we have the input session here, running this works like a charm. It was really easy to get to work. And yeah, this is just an example. It has a huge ton of uh, different different connectors. So if you want to write this in a database, like a Postgres database, you could do that. Or uh, I think there's MongoDB and like most likely almost everything you can think of, you can connect to. So then I think the end result will be I will push this data to a database and maybe create a small UI on that or on that database and, and for the trigger I will make it dynamic and maybe maybe start with uh, triggering it via a Gmail alert and, and grab the URL from there and run it like that and doing web scraping where you iteratively scrape the whole website you might need to take some more things into account. But the thing which I uh, struggled for a moment was getting this Cheerio module running. So I wrote some notes here on the community page. And yeah, if you need help with the installation, the installation video and instructions I used, uh, they are included here in the community page. So I'll include that in the description. But to get the Cheerio module up and running, uh, the N8N is running in Docker on an Ubuntu machine. So on the Ubuntu host machine, I created a new folder. I went into that folder and then just used npm install Cheerio. And I modified the Docker compose file. Uh, this is also told in the documentation, but ChatGPT did tell me find the correct documentation and guide me through this. So uh, I added this node function allow external and I allowing the Cheerio module to be allowed. And then there's a volume mapping for mapping the mapping the host uh, disk folder into the Docker container. Uh, so that's pretty much how far I have gone with N8N this far. If you're interested in more videos on N8N, please do let me know down below in the comments. And if you have some more comments or suggestions or questions, you can leave those in the, in the community. You can also add screenshots here so it's a bit easier to discuss than just in the YouTube comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.